Okay folks, we're going to go ahead and give you a really quick tip on how to connect to your Raspberry Pi to control it remotely. So we're going to install a VNC server on the Raspberry Pi. We're going to set it to start automatically and then we're going to test it just to make sure that everything is working. Okay. So VNC is a way to, it's called virtual network computing and it's a way to control another machine remotely. So say you're, you've got another computer and you want to talk to the, or you want to control the, VN, the, the, uh, the Raspberry Pi, you'll use VNC. I'm going to draw you a quick diagram that's going to explain how the whole concept works. And you're going to want to take notes because this is not just applicable to VNC. It applies to almost anything where you're going to connect to something and do something to a remote computer, including watching web pages or even your uh, iTunes. So you got a remote computer, and it's got an address, you know, something like www.something.com, okay, and then your computer. Now at the remote location, the actual address is a set of numbers, the IP address, okay. So it's like here's 126.11.8.7, and at your home location usually has both, but most of us really only care about the IP address again. So say here I'm just going to invent... 13.10.11.10, okay, and that's just some IP. Now, on the remote machine, we have the server. In this case, it's called X11VNC. On your home machine, you need a client, okay, and the client here is usually something called VNC Viewer. There's many different kinds, by the way, just like there's many different kinds of browsers. Now, when we connect to the IP address, we don't just connect to the IP address itself. We also connect to what is called a port. And that's just kind of like the extension on a telephone number tree. It'll connect you to somewhere more specific. Ports, like I said, every computer has many, many, many ports because it's, gonna, it's doing a lot of things on the network. You know, for example, 22 might be for is for SSH. Port 40 is for web pages. Port 134, I think, is for NetBIOS, which is where all your computers talk locally on the network and they get to know each other. In our case, 5900 is VNC. Okay. So if you wanted to connect to the remote machine, you would type in the IP address and you would also type in the port. Now if you if you're gonna use the default setting by the way, you usually don't type it in your system will know. It's only if you're going to type something different. Once you connect to it, the server will of course come back and talk to you, okay, and we can go ahead and get started. So just remember the most important points here is in order to connect is you need a VNC server and a VNC client. I'm going to assume you have the client. So now let's go ahead and start we're going to SSH into our Raspberry Pi. And that address is mine. Yours might be different. <laughs> okay, so here we are. And let's go ahead and set, start the install. As you know, the command always begins with sudo. Okay, super user do. So we say sudo and apt dash get install x11 vnc. Now, if some of these things are too small or too fast for you, remember you can always pause the video and let and, and watch it at your leisure. I'm also going to leave a link in the description with these uh, with how all of this works. Okay, so um, don't let any of this seem too um, too obscure for you. It's not that hard once you try it. So it's done, and now we're going to store the VNC password. Okay, so we type x 11 vnc store pass wd. Okay, and here we just type any password you want. Now, if you're going to be connecting to the net later on, you're probably going to want to keep some sort of complicated password. Okay, you don't just want to type in the word password. But anyway, that's up to you. Do you want to save it? Well, of course. 
So we go ahead and type yes. Now we make the directory. Go ahead and type this all out. Nice and slow, by the way. If you're a beginner, go very, very slow. Don't go like me. <laughs> okay. You don't want to make a mistake and then make the wrong directory somewhere. You're going to start leaving garbage all over your machine. And once we've made it, we'll change directory just to make sure that it's there. And there it is. We list it to see if there's anything in it. Of course, there's nothing in it because it's new. Now, we go ahead and create a file. We're going to use the text editor called nano and we're going to create a file called x11vnc.desktop. And so here's nano. You can use any kind of text editor by the way, but most of you probably are more comfortable with nano. It's very beginner friendly. So I start typing. Most of these commands again, you really want to be very very careful typing these things exactly as they appear. But make no mistakes because 99% of the time for beginners when you have crashes and problems with your with your program, 99% of the time, you made a mistake in typing. I know Google can figure out your misspelling, but believe me, there's still a lot in computing that will not forgive bad spelling. Which you know, on on a on a off on a tangent, I would have thought that programmers would be great at spelling, considering how how absolutely. Um, demanding it is, uh, how, how required it is to spell right in programming, but no, uh, many programmers have horrible spelling. You know, it's weird <laughs> how they can compartmentalize, how they can be really good at spelling when it's necessary, but still be very lazy otherwise. So anyway, we're done here, okay, and we're going to go ahead and hit Control X to save the file. And now we're done, okay. Now we look for it, and there it is. And we're going to reconfigure the X11 program. Okay, so to do that, we type sudo again, and then dpkg dash reconfigure. In the name of our program, common. It's not exactly the name of the program, by the way. The program itself is actually called X11 common. And here we select anybody and then we hit enter and it should tell you okay setting up X socket directories which is the only one you care about the other warnings aren't really that important okay so if everything is good we're gonna go ahead and restart and test so we're, we're going down we're going down In three, two, oh, going down now. <coughs> now we're opening up our VNC viewer on the remote machine. And here it's just asking us because it expects an encrypted connection usually, which we'll tell it okay. And there we are. Now, if you're looking, if you have your Raspberry Pi on the screen showing up remotely, you should notice that everything that we see here is also showing up on your other screen, okay? Um, the reason this is a little more complicated than others is, of course, first of all, this is Linux. Uh, second of all, um, many of you might have installed v tight VNC or other VNC programs, and you might have noticed that it didn't work like that because the way that most windowing systems on Linux work is that they will give you different desktops um, and you'll never get the, 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 the default desktop so that always complicates things um, so this is actually um, quite useful and it's not very common to set it up like this so anyway we've gone ahead and opened up a program here on Mathematica and we're just gonna test and see you know if we can do something remotely on it which we already can in SSH but now we're doing it on the graphical user interface we just plotted the x squared plot. And so I hope you see, you know, that um, 
we've gone ahead and set it up so that now we can do this all by remote control. And we're going to need this later on. So uh, let's go ahead and now let's just um, let me just give you a summary. And of course, let me remind you, this is only for a local setup, only inside your house. You can set this up to connect from outside your house, okay? But it requires that you know three things. A little more about TCP IP, how to set up an, a dynamic DNS, I usually use afraid.org, and how to set up your router to forward traffic. And usually, <laughs> number three is the hardest part because everybody has different routers, everybody has different ways of doing it, and oh, you're just going to lose your mind trying to figure that last one out. So don't come and ask me for that. I really don't want to waste the rest of my life trying to teach everybody to do that. Most of you, if you're adventurous enough, you'll figure it out. Okay, guys. So I hope that helped you out. And if you got any questions, let me know, okay? Okay, take care.